is Hardy here on WCMP back out live to Chris's Food Center for all the action of the best bagger competition. Joshua, that uh, that first competitor saw it come right down to the wire. Are we ready for competitor number two? Yeah, the time uh, was pretty good. Um, a minute 26, I believe, point one two was the official time that I had, although the official time I get, of course, is meaningless. It's whatever the stopwatch over there says. But that's kind of the important thing to look at. So there's a, a points possible when it comes to the time. And if you're in between 0 to 53 seconds, that is 10 points. Moving on down to the to 57 is 9. 61 seconds, which would be a minute and one second, is 8. Moving all the way down to, it looks like, well, that would have been points-wise, would only be about two, two and a half, three points is what he would have gotten for that time. So out of 10, obviously, that's not a strong start out of the gate. Although, did I look at the, the groceries look fine to me. It looked pretty well packed. So I was pretty okay with it. I just think, unfortunately, score-wise, he's probably going to get to docked there just a little bit on all that stuff. So we are ready here for the second one. That's going to be uh, Joey Olson getting ready for what should be an awesome second round. The first round, once again, just blew us away. The distribution of the weight between bags is another thing that you're going to see here scoring-wise. And whenever they are ready, we will be rocking this away. All right. All right, folks. Bag is ready. Got to open it first, now and going right away to the right side. He's working from right to left, which is kind of a genius move considering the bags are sitting there on the left side. So if he starts working that way, then he's got a little bit more room to open up those bags. He looks very methodical. It doesn't look like he's even thought about this yet. He's putting all the stuff in. He is ready. He's nodding his head in 100% agreement because he knows he's got the first bag done. He's just putting the last couple things on top there. That bread... Just hanging on the edge as he goes to bag number two. Working bag number two is that one. Starting to get loaded right on the bottom. That's going to have great weight on the bottom. That's going to be holding it up just fine. It just depends on what's put on top. He's working out there through the top all the way to the tomato sauce. Now the re reduced fat Pringles, which, of course, for a person like me, you need a little bit more of that reduced fat. Got that set. It's on top, and he's going to hold his hands up. There's one item. Oh, and he's got it in. Looks like he got that one down pretty good. A pretty fast time for that one as well. That's just hanging around the minute mark. When we come back, we'll have contestant number three here on WCMP. All right, back All right, here, back WCMP. WCMP. Looks like Katie Lundberg is up now here for the bagging competition. Let's get that stopwatch ready. And here we go. Underway. Open up the first bag right there at the front. This is kind of a, a slower pace, but a... A well thought out, she's going boxes right away. All of a sudden, boom, one bo well, big box, medium box, little box, and now going for the sauce. Now going for the pickles. And, the, and that's going to be a, a, a heavy-weighted first bag. I think she's trying to really get those evened out, and I'm guessing that she'll try to keep this down here to two bags. We'll see. There are four different bags there on as she packs the beef jerky right there in the pocket of the corner, and that looks like that's it for bag number one. Opening up bag number two now. We'll see what she leads off with. Going to go with the baked beans. Going to go with the canned goods and then the pasta. And then what's next? Going to go with a couple more boxed items here. That's going to be a couple of different uh, lighter things there at the bottom. She's going to have to quickly go to the cans. Otherwise, those cans are not going to have a place to sit. She's now going to the barbecue sauce. Maybe she's going to go for bag number three. No, she's going to try to toss those cans in towards the bottom. And we'll see if that will affect the overall score if she's able to get those in. She's now got the bread in. Working the paper towels in as well, down to three items, down to the last few as she puts the chips on top, and now just a loaf of bread is all that's left, and bam, that is packed on in. She's let go, and that is a minute 18 for that one. So second-wise, that is going to be in the four-point range just for time-wise. They're going to go over to the scale, do the weight distribution, and then we'll find out if the technique was well after we get to the end and we get the final scores from the judges. We'll take another break. We'll be right back. You're listening to WCMP. Thank you, Andrew Thank you, Duvall, Andrew Josh Marinald here, here once again broadcasting live for the best bagger competition out here at Chris's 
food. Looks like we got Lynn that's going to be coming up here next. Lynn Sonner. We are three people in here so far of, I believe, the 13 contestants. We'll see if they end up. There is sometimes some added on there at the end after some peer pressure from coworkers. Sometimes we get a little bit extra. Let's bring in uh, Roberta. Uh, so far, what have, you, what have you seen so far? It's... A lot of begging. Yes. <laughs> do you, have you? Did you think? Do you think you can do better than anybody you've seen so far? Oh heck no! That girl rocked it though. Not bad time wise, and we right. are getting ready here for the next contestant. Here we go. From Pine City. From Pine Ooh, City. Pine City girl. Standing tall at five foot eleven. <laughs> getting ready here to bag, and boom, bags open. Working here in the bottom left corner, now working up top. Cereal box right away. It kind of seems consistent. We've seen three the different people like go straight for the boxes. It's it's an interesting strategy. Me personally would have gone for all the heavy cans, but I'm also a terrible weight distribution, as you can tell from my stomach, compared to my legs. We're going to test you on this later, We're going right? to test it later. We'll see if I can compete with any of these people. I <laughs> guarantee I can win this competition. We'll wait and see, though. I'll, I'll make put sure my, to record that for everybody. I'll put my groceries where <laughs> my mouth is. We're sitting here at about uh, just about done with the first bag. She's going to the paper towels there. And unlike everybody else, she's putting the paper towel up and down. Everybody else had that paper towel right. to go into the side across, and bag number one is done. That looks like it's not going anywhere, so she should be fine. And by the way, you do get deducted one point if something's falling out of the bag as you pick it up. She's now going here to the heavier items for bag number two to kind of put the solid base down there. Continuing to go now to all the cans. So she kind of did what I would do, I would say, is go to all those cans, get those all on down on that base level, and then boom, you just move to everything else. Now she's basically got all the soft items she's going to toss on top here. No problems. Ooh, she's and she's going to be coming good. up close on that time if she can get the bread and the chips in here. And looks and like we will hold that down at a minute 20 for the time on that one. And they'll go away that one, and we'll come back here. You're listening to WCMP. Welcome back here, folks, as we're getting set here for the next contestant. And this one's going to be Robert Haas. Robert Haas is ready here, folks. And boom, we are underway. He's quickly going to the big box. That seems to be just a theme of everybody as Robert goes quickly for the big box, then moves on over here now to the cans. He is throwing it in a little more aggressive, just a little more aggressively. He's throwing those in there. He's just, he's got the longer arm, so he's able to reach all the way across the table and go exactly what he wants. I got a good feeling he's going to be able to be the fastest time here, right, but right we'll now. see, we'll see if that kind of plays into the quality though because it's not just about speed sometimes it's about how you bag it there's so many different point totals although speed is the highest one you can get 10 points off of speed while the other next highest one is five points with that distribution of weight we're at here with about 45 seconds now with robert as he's working towards those last couple items down to the last five items he's moving to the pringles the pringles are in robert now grabs wow. the paper towels the chips here wow. and then boom wow a 56 second point 27 according to my stopwatch could be a little off but either way that looks like that's going to be under a minute which yeah. means he's going to get at least eight points for the time and i think that's going to be a big contributing factor probably going to be a top five candidate there with speed like that we'll see how the distribution comes from also there's the proper bagging technique and then also our items crushable and stuff like that. We'll talk about that and more here later on as well. We'll take a quick break. Be right back. You're listening to WCMP. Welcome back here, WCMP. Josh Ramirez here at the Best Bagger Competition out here broadcasting live as we're getting ready here for the next bagger to go as this one is Emma. Emma's going to be opening the first bag. Goes for the toasted oats once again. What's with the toasted oats, Roberta? <laughs> because is that it's just, so close and it's, it's big. It's just so close and it's big. They just It's right by the bags. Obviously, you can't try to stuff that in a little bit later. Right. But Emma's going to start going over to the far right side, grabbing some of the things and putting them off to the left side of that box, kind of holding up that height. The problem is you've got that. You've got the other boxes. What are you going to put in the middle of that bag? That's 
Loki, one of the more, one of the things that you're kind of not thinking about enough. You're thinking about the base, and then all of a sudden you forget about the middle. You know what's on the bottom, you know what's on the top. Right. It's all about how you put it down the middle. And right now she's going to go paper towel and then bread kind of towards the middle. So she's going to finish that first bag up a little bit early compared to right. the other contestants. And we'll see how that works out. I think that could help her in the bagging distribution overall. But I think also the time is just worth so much points that right now the fact that we're on about halfway done here with bag number two. She's going to have a tough time here Ooh, getting that time. Now, now grabbing three different things at <laughs> once, wow. though, could be a big jump. That's kind of, I haven't seen, everybody's been going one, one, Whoa, one. No, Boom, three. She now she's again. going three. Just no, she's with just no regard them. for the bag. And now goes to the paper towel and then the chips, and Woo. she is done. Good job. One minute and 23 seconds. That's pretty good. That's going to put it there to the three-point range on that one. <laughs> Roberta, that was uh, – it got pretty interesting there towards the end. Right. And it, just grabbing the multiple items at once, I thought that was uh, that was really that was impressive. Very clever. We haven't seen anybody going that. Right. Do you think we can get them in for an interview? Do you think we'll you – uh, Get get a big yeah, time. Yeah, we'll get Craig get a, on here. We'll get a big time name over here. We'll get some. We'll get we'll get a little bit of a breakdown, and we'll talk a little bit as we're waiting for them to set up for the next contestant. And because it's it seems they're getting the uh, setup quicker and quicker here each time. Why don't you just start off by introducing yourself to the crowd? Hi, I'm uh, Craig Thorvig from Chris's Food Center. Our family owns this, and uh, I was uh, fortunate enough to win this state contest uh, many many years ago. Now, when you were uh, going out on the town, maybe, was that the first thing you'd bring out? You'd just be like, ah, you know, best bagger back in, uh, what year was it? Uh, 91. I don't, I don't know about going out on the town when, oh, I was, okay. when I was 16, but I'll, I'll tell you this. It was a, a great uh, eye catcher on your resume um, looking for jobs right out of college. It's, it's the first thing uh, people would ask about in interviews. Yeah, what, 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 is a, what is a state begging champ? <laughs> and why would you put it on your resume? I love it, though. That's something you got to add to everything to just spice it up at least a little bit. Uh, so far, have you been impressed, disappointed, right down the middle? I mean, as a champion no. yourself, obviously you got the bar settled pretty high. Well, but I, I was a champion a long, long time ago. I've been far surpassed by our people today. They're, they're doing a fantastic job, and... Uh, and uh, it's great to see the enthusiasm and, and the turnout as far as the number of participants. What, so. Just to come off the bank uh, competition here just for a second, why don't you tell uh, the folks listening what Chris's Foods is just all about? Well, we're a family-owned grocery store in a, in a small town. We're on our uh, 1974. Uh, my dad purchased it from Burton and Dorothy Samwick. And uh, we're actually on our third building here in, in Sandstone. We've uh, expanded... Um, and relocated this our, our third location and uh we're just a small town grocery store well awesome thank you so much for joining me here looks yep. like we're gonna go back to the yep. competition we'll talk to you later all right thank you guys for having us here once again back to the bagging competitions as we are getting ready here looks like um seager is going to be our next one seager jepson is ready here all right seager let's see what you got he looks, Ooh, he looks just, so young. He goes slowly <laughs> for the bag open. Look. He's not trying to break the <laughs> world record. I buddies? can promise that much. His buddies are saying, come on. His friend's trying to cheer him on. But if you're old, if you're maybe, I would say, over the age of 60 or 70, and you just want to watch <laughs> the bag boy do things slowly but perfectly, <laughs> this is your man. This is the guy that is going to take the time to make sure every single grocery is maybe put in perfectly. his friends made him join. Well, <laughs> sometimes you just got to do things. It's just I'm a speed guy. To be honest, this is just this we'll is just well later. this is just well thought out. He's taking his time. He grabbed the toasted oats. Nah, not today, toasted oats. He's going right to the chips. Now he's going to the paper towel and now he's going to go with another bag. Ooh. Giving you the option if you want more bags at home, this seems like the guy you want to package up your groceries <laughs> because you're going to have plenty of bags at home and you're going to be covered. You know, you, you ever have garbage at home you need to throw in a different plastic bag? He's got you set. And now he's moving to the barbecue sauce, putting the barbecue sauce in. We're here at a minute right now. So he's definitely, like I said, methodical. He's right. thinking, he's about, thinking it. about it. He's calculating it out in his head. And as long as the numbers come out all right, we can wait a little bit of extra time. So the 
distributional weight, I think, is going to be a big deal in the, for his score. I think it's going to help. He's going to be closer to that five. The proper bagging technique, obviously, that's going to be a yes. And then you just move on. You can circle basically every single point for everything else. It's just about the time. Is the time going to be too much for him to overcome in the overall score? I'm not sure. I, think, I don't know. I think that's where we're going to have to bring it down. He's going to go Pringles. Oh, he grabs all three at once, but then sets it down <laughs> off to the side. And now the bread is on top, and there we go. He's let's make, let's make sure it's perfect. Let's make sure it's perfect. <laughs> Boom! <Squish>. 144. <laughs> oh. <laughs> They're probably the best packed bags we're going to see here of the What's night. That? That's going to be what it's going to – it might be all about. I just think – it's going to be impossible to recover. For a week, I guess. Only been here for a week, yeah, and he already just, already it. under two minutes? <laughs> I mean, I don't want to show these kids up, but we'll see if maybe I'll be able to get under two minutes at some point here. But, Roberta, that was um, that was different than the other ones we've seen yeah, here so far. Well, it kind of makes sense now that I know that he's a new employee. He's probably a little bit more bashful. What? Yeah, but even, even more bashful, you know those bags were packed right. I watched yeah. him. He basically did the same thing everybody else did, but just a little bit slower, took his time. And if I'm going grocery shopping and I, and I got seven loaves of bread, he's yeah. packing it for me because I know those are going to be looking good there. At yes, the end of the time. Paid attention to detail. Paid sure. attention to detail, and right. sometimes that's what it's all about. There's the, there's the different styles. Right. I'm I'm the sprinter. I'm going for the sprint. He was kind of in a marathon pace right there. We got to keep it slow and steady. You're going 26.7 miles, or as the the stopwatch said, about 156. Yeah. And you're just keeping that steady pace, and that's kind of uh, that's what it's all about. Sometimes we'll see. I'm <laughs> expecting we're going to see this uh, this Jake. Lori Bowen is going to probably kick it up speed-wise. I expect him yeah. to kind of come up. You see the last one. You see the time on that. You know that ended up costing him. So it was more than 89 seconds. So that means he's actually going to only get one point on that. And unfortunately, out of the 10 possible wow. points, all of a sudden you went from 30 possible points overall to only about oh, wow. 21 possible points and that's definitely going to hurt anybody you're almost better off just throwing all 10 items into the bag at I full like that speed girl with the multiple at one yeah time. grabbing the multiple items that she switched hard. she switched to that a little bit later right. on though i wonder if she would have had a better time had she started off with it that could have been a huge difference but we will wait and see as the judges are tallying up the score i'm not probably right. not supposed to look but I just saw from over the shoulder, he did get the one on the time. But then I'm looking at some of the other scores, and there's a five, and then there's the two up here. So really covering up a lot of those points Principles that I'm not supposed to stuff, that I'm not yeah. supposed to know about. Looks like we are ready here for the next one. Jake Lori Bowen getting set here. Oh, he stares me down. He's ready. <laughs> he's ready for it. Oh, he's feeling the pressure now. Feels embarrassed that I called no. him out. No, he told me earlier he wasn't nervous. He's not nervous, That's is what he's been me. promised. He's not nervous. He's got the the top collar is unbuttoned. The polo is unbuttoned. He's ready for all speed. Going to the pretzels and the box right away. This is not bad. Not a bad start. He might have to pick it up to get that speed up there towards that higher number. But once again, sometimes it's not always about speed. He's got the peaches in there. The peaches, now that's a low-key fruit that you just don't want to forget about when it comes to packing it. You've got to make sure that's in the middle. If you got it at the bottom, that crushes too much. Yeah. If you got it at the top, you're kind of wasting the space, and it's going to crush things below it. So you've got to kind of – would have been fun on here. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's just what, you, what you're going to end up packing. He's moving to bag number two here with a lot of energy. The energy has picked up since bag number one. You can see it in his face, the excitement. The fl All of a sudden, <laughs> you just pretty, see the – He's the, pretty focused. Look at him. Yeah, he just – He's, he's just ignored me. You talk to the bag, too. That's the, that's the key. Yeah, sometimes you got to talk to the bag. Let the bag tell you where to put things. <laughs> you let the bag speak to you. It's not always about how you pack it or what you think. The <laughs> bags are talking. And now he's going for the paper towel, and then all of a sudden the rice, and then paper towel, and boom, Woo! he's done. Under a minute. Nah, it was actually I, I started the stopwatch a little bit late. Oh. Way, to, way to put that on me because I was oh, just going to yeah. lie to the way audience to and tell them <laughs> it was a different time. I didn't get a chance to see the stopwatch. I'm slow to the stopwatch, okay? I'm trying Sounds to – like, I, it's the excitement of the bags. You expect me to just be able to kind of keep up? No, it's not possible. 
So a pretty, up pretty decent performance. I was expecting Jake to go a little bit more with the speed there. Once again, I thought he pretty he packed it pretty well, though. He looked confident, though. It was somewhere in between so far. I don't think that's enough to jump him on the leaderboard. He might be in the four spot as of right now. We'll see if he's going to be able to jump back up. Mo Tori is going to be next here as he is kind of looking things up. You get This is where you get to... He's number nine on our list here so far. Once you get down to the number nine spot, that's where I would keep things out because these people have seen the other eight people pack up these bags. So right. it's kind of, you gotta, you know what's going on. Tricks and tips, they've already you, seen them. You've seen it, and also you've gotten the chance to listen to professional announcer <laughs> tell you exactly what to do. Oh, and Joshua. if you would listen to that, you can. It'll really help your overall score. I feel sorry for the first couple of people because they don't think they don't realize that I know what I'm talking about after hours of research, <laughs> based upon that. Whole, we got a pack. You handed me a packet. Right. I had a 15 page packet. Yes, you did. I followed that packet. I made sure I got all the scoring down. I got it all perfectly. So I think I know what it's all about. And I, yeah, that's right. I didn't even need to bring it today. I, I just whispered to him, yeah. did you bring it? I didn't need to bring like, it today because I, I studied it so well. So right. Mo getting set here as they are going to close up all the bags. All these bags, by the way, are those snap reusable bags. You're helping out the environment. It's a nice thing to carry. I, unfortunately, I have a terrible memory. So we usually go with the paper bags and then we recycle but for the people that are smart enough to remember it every single time, that's something that comes in real handy. Looks like we are getting sent here for the next All contestant. Right. Who is the next contestant? Mo. Mo is coming up here. Once again, it is the Chris's Mo Food Center Best Bagger Competition. I'm Josh Ramirez I'm broadcasting live. All right. Mo is right. coming up here. He's coming up to the table. He's getting his hand on the bag already. I don't know if he's allowed to do that. I think he's supposed to wait. Here we go. Here we go. Bags open right oh, away. Oh, Whoa. he almost threw he the toasted oats. With no regard for the toasted oats, almost knocked it on the other side of the table, but he saved it real quickly. <laughs> he, look at how he's putting things in the wow. bag and then twisting. He's doing a guy. twist to kind of make sure Whoa, that gets all the way to He's it. packing it tight. <laughs> First bag. Push it in there. Wow. <laughs> well, trust me, there'll be more items in that bag than any bag we've seen here tonight. And he's wasting no time to doing that. We're almost at the 30-second mark. He was thinking about switching bags there or what he's going to put on top. He's going to go bread, and then he's got paper towels. He's got to switch wow. bags. He's switching bags now. He's down to a 40 seconds. Working his way, box. Oh, Ooh, the Ooh, bag started kinda. to kind of fold in a little bit. Just on that right corner, he was able to recover, but that's still a tough thing to recover from now as we're coming up on 50 seconds. Working his way now to the Pringles. He's now going to the got cans, it. trying to stuff everything in. He's got that last paper towel, which he knows is going to go to the end along with the chips. He's got the pasta. Now he's going paper towel. Ooh. And now chips, if he can pull up that last handle, he'll get it nice and tight. And we're sitting here at a minute 05. <laughs> On that one. It almost so, looked like he thought there was more on the table. Yeah, he was looking it? around for more of it. But, but uh, I don't know if his buddies were giving him a hard time and he got distracted. I don't know. Yeah, something. I don't know. If for some reason, people were trying to distract him. I don't know why anybody <laughs> would ever do something like that. I mean, it's it's, right? it's something I take, obviously, very seriously. I try not to distract people. Right. I realize I'm sitting about six inches from them yelling in their face. <laughs> but at the same time. You're I not got, a distraction I got, ever. I'm not a distraction at all. They're going to look on. over these. And look over the packing. At, on second glance here from the top, the one of the bag on the right side, not as well packed as probably would have liked. That's probably gonna end up costing him a point. By the way, let's go through that point system here while we got a chance. Once again, the speed ends up being the most points. That's 10 points possible, and it kind of varies. If you're in the 0 to 53 seconds, that's that 10 point. Mm -hmm. Then basically every four seconds after that goes down one point. So it's very important. If you can get that 53 seconds in, you can almost rush everything else, and it really doesn't matter as long as they're all in the bag and you're not crushing things. Then it comes to the distribution of the weight between bags. So you're trying to get those bags at the about the exact same, and it's about the weight difference. You get points based off of that, and then you move on down to the proper build it, bag building technique. Did any of the items fall out of the bag when picked up? You deduct one point if it's yes. So if it's and halfway out, does it still? I don't think so. Okay. It's got to fall out, and so far I have yet, I believe, to see anything fall out of I the bag. I saw bread hanging out. There was out. bread hanging yeah. out, but it wasn't enough to fall out. Yeah, I, I don't, don't think so. Now, are there any items left on the table? 
we haven't seen that as well either. All except for, there was the one where he kind of forgot about it, but then I think picked yes, it up. A little I'm jello not, box we'll, or we'll wait to see what the judges got for the score on that one, and we'll wait to see. And also, these are the crushable items such as bread, eggs on top. That's worth the point as well. And then the bags orderly or the bag, any items damaged, all that. Although it will cost you points as well. So that's where it's kind of important <laughs> to just be packing that stuff right and making sure you know exactly what you're doing. Looks like we got. Um, so Scott's up next, and I, uh, Christy just told me that it's his last day today. He's moving away. So Scott is going to try to go out with a bang. Yes. Scott, step back three. It's oh, good. In the basketball Coaches Hall of Fame. Oh, he's in the Basketball Coaches Hall of Fame is what Craig just told me. We're sitting around royalty, but the question I yeah. care about is, can he bag groceries? Can he do it fast? <laughs> Let's see. All right, slowly grabs the first bag. He's taking his time. Oh, put some air into it. He's going with the box first. The second box. He's kicking it now to the sauces. Just taking his time, making sure he, this this looks like a guy that's done this a long time. Right. He's been packing these bags for your grandma, your mom, the kids now that have all grown up. He's made sure all those bags have been packed for a long time. And now he's just making sure it's right. <laughs> right. I, I, I dare I say he's not going to get the 10 points there for the bagging time. But once again, it's going to be one of those things where he makes sure you're going to home with a well-packed bag. Is that that's going to hurt the overall score, though. That's just the 10 points as he just opens up bag number two. He's going to go with the spray right off the bat. That's an interesting item to start off bag number two. I like to go with maybe a little bit more of the bulk items there at the bottom, and I just don't think that's going to – that's just going to get in the way. Get in now the way. He's, now he's just kind of lightly tossing a couple of different things in yeah, there. Yeah, it looks like he's getting full quick. He's yeah. Well, sometimes you see this with competitors. Yep. As they get closer to the end of their time, they're starting to get <laughs> tired, and it's just something that's hard to pack. He's got the Slim Jim in there now, and then he's putting in the last three items. So I really think that's going to be – Oh, a, there it is. And he's got the chips, and looks like that's – Oh, oh there one he goes. last item, Ooh. and there you go. And he packs it in and does the fist pump there, and – Time-wise, I uh, will just say that is the above the 1 minute and 29 second mark. So he's going to be sitting there with a one point when it comes to that. By the way, we'll be taking a break here at the top of the hour, so stay tuned for that. Uh, looks like Melanie Lang, I believe, is coming yep. up next as well. We're getting down there, <laughs> folks. We've got Melanie Lang, we've got Tyler Thorvig, and then Grant Peterson will be the last contestant here that is on the docket so far. We'll mm -hmm. see if that changes up here. We'll see if uh, they bring in somebody from the crowd or I don't know. We never right. know what's going to happen. No. These no. bagging competitions, they'll keep you on your edge. It's kind of fun seat. to see girls do it. Well, I mean, so far I would say the uh, the first girl that went up there, uh, or no, Emma, Emma had a very fast time. Emma's probably in the top three, I would say, uh, Katie, I believe, had a, a good time as well. Mm -hmm. We'll kind of wait and see. Those judges have been kind of hiding all their those scores, scores from me. Yeah. I've been looking over their shoulder and kind of just like checking it out at least a little bit, but they've been kind of hiding it from me. And you think they'd want me to see the scores before anybody else because of obviously <laughs> my importance. But I understand. We've got to keep things clear. You don't want me influencing who is going to win the best bagger competition. Right. By the way, we did have the pleasure, if you didn't hear earlier on, to talk to Alex Finch. He was the winner last year here at Chris's Food Center. So that was kind of a big deal there last year. And you're talking to somebody famous over there? Or? Yeah, I guess um, Patrick is Patrick is somebody who used to, uh, he was on our, I'm assuming he's on our list. I don't know. I don't see, just told I don't me. See, I don't see him on the winner's list. Oh, yeah. Way Patrick. down there, 1995. Yeah. What are we talking about? Yeah, sounds like Patrick wants to do an interview. Uh, does he want to? Bring him on in All if right. he wants to. Hold on one second. Let's talk to the – I mean, let's let's bring him in here at least for the broadcast. Let's – let's. I mean, as long as you don't say any cuss words, uh, it doesn't really matter what you say here. So let's talk about it. So this is 1995, Patrick? 
Yes, it is. What does it feel like coming back <laughs> to the place where it all began? Oh, exhilarating. It, uh, we actually live in Omaha, Nebraska now, and we just happened to be in town to visit my parents. And I walked in and saw the setup. And so actually, you didn't plan this. You didn't make the the no. homage back to this just to check out the competition. No, we didn't. Unfortunately, I didn't. I didn't know about. It. We didn't get that word down in Nebraska. Well, but, they were there was whispers about Patrick possibly showing up today, <laughs> and we've been, of course, listening to him. We didn't think it was going to happen. But do you, do you mind helping me with this next person and give me a little bit of a breakdown oh. while we're doing this? They use paper bags. That was way, that's way, I'm way before that time. You, what, you were plastic? We were paper, or no, I'm sorry, these are cloth bags. We did paper wow, bags. Wow, it's about, well, it's not the same thing. I don't mean, back when it was more talent, you could use paper bags. Now the kids these days are using the reusable. It's not as hard, obviously, but it's still not, it's oh. not, a, it's not a bad challenge at least. So let's, let's just sit around. I'm going to ask you a couple of questions. We'll see as this thing goes along. Just looking at the spread right now, what's the first thing you're going for? I'm going for the big box and uh, get the big stuff out of the way. Because the paper that, towels, the boxes. I think every person has gone for the toasted oats to start off. So you think that's the that's the right decision? Creates a good firm side a corner. Yeah. Well, 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 we'll watch this one and we'll see exactly which one she's going to go for. That or even the even the heavy jars. You got to you got to even the weight out. Get those jars now. Did you guys have the weight distribution as part of your scoring as well? Absolutely. Was that yeah. one of the harder things you found out? Because it's a little bit tough to pre-plan that weight, isn't it? Or do you, are you just a pro when it comes to that? Oh, no, no, no means a pro. I think the uh, Craig did a good job in coaching. No means a pro. 1995 yeah. state champion over here talking about no means a pro. Get out of here. Stop being so humble. We're out here at the best beggar competition, and hopefully we are ready for the – if we're waiting for the next person – this one is going to be Melanie Lang. Let's rock it out here as she's getting set. She is ready with that first bag. All right. And boom. All right. And she's off. She's going for that first bag. See? So she follows your advice with that box. Now going with the peaches next. Is it, Are those peaches, should that be more of a middle tier item? or No, uh, you think that's... It's a good bottom. It's that's a good bottom. You can, set a lot of, you can set things on top. But the peaches, I think, crush a little bit more than those cans do, don't you think? She's got lots of bags to fill up, though. Well, fair enough. As she's moving on next here, any advice you've you you've seen so far? It looks like she's doing a pretty good job here so far on this one. Sometimes I like to open a couple bags at once. That's what she she unsnapped two yeah. right away, so that way she wouldn't have to go back to the snapping. Because I think if you have to go back to the snapping, that's a restart basically for you mentally. Where boom, if you can just grab the bag with the one hand, that's going to really help. Oh, she's doing well. Down here to 50 seconds, and she's down to the last eight items here. We'll see if she can get into that time frame. Do you recall what your time frame was back in the day? I do not. You do not? We, well, so the, the year I did it was the first year that did paper and plastic, so we had to do it two rounds. Whew. And boom, she is done at 108. That is a very fast time on that. Patrick, I want to thank you so much for joining me here, of course. 1995 champion. And, and uh, enjoy your time back up here in Minnesota. Thanks for having me, man. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. We'll send it back to Andrew Duvall here in studio. We'll be right back on WCMP. All right, welcome back here, WCMP folks, as we are moving on here to contestant number 12. That is Tyler Thorvig. Now, if you look at his that last name, of course, that last name comes back up in 1991. Yes, relation to the winner in 1991. That is Craig Thorvig. Oh, and we're going kid. quickly over to this that's one. Trying to work to the peaches. Puts that in the corner. Oh, we got a good. This is a good start. This is oh, a really good start. It's in his blood. Oh, something, something went down to the bottom of the table. He's got to hurry. To get rid of that first bag. Oh, pops open the second one quick as a bullet. Probably the fastest bag open we've seen here right. so far tonight. He's loading up the bottom. That time's starting to add up, though. Can he get that last? He's got to get these last, like, seven items in really quickly there to make room for the paper towels and the chips. I think the weight distribution on this one's going to be fine. It's going to come down all to time. Beef right. jerky chips in. Boom, boom, last wow. a couple items. He's got the one rice. Hopefully he doesn't miss the rice. He's got to pack it in somewhere. The rice is going to get thrown to the other bag. There it goes. Wow. Decent time-wise. Really 
I'm going to be <laughs> intrigued if that comes out to a, depending on the time that that officially comes out to, that was definitely one of the higher time-wise, but it's going to come down to exactly what kind of packing that was going to be there <laughs> to the end. We're down to our last couple ones here, folks. That was contestant number 12, Tyler Thorvig. Up next, looks like we're going to have Grant Peterson, and we're going to have Dick Alb, and then also Brooke Hart as well. And looks like we're going to get one of the uh, judges possibly here on the uh, for a quick interview if she wants to throw on this headset, and we'll talk about it. I don't know. Doesn't sound like she really wants to be doing this, but uh, sounds like she's going to do this anyways. So um, can you pl first off tell me uh, – where did you get your doctorate in uh, <laughs> bagging judging? Can I can I have that? I think it's self learned. Self learned? <laughs> you just taught yourself? Or the Chris's University. Chris's University. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I I have a doctorate in food and well as well. Yeah. So I mean it kind of it kind of works out there. Uh, so the uh, times wise, that's kind of obviously you see the ten points, and that's what I'm curious about. I feel like you'd be better off to just throw items in as fast as possible just to get that full 10 points because have you seen a lot of deductions in point-wise and the other stuff? No, because you need to have it organized. You need to have all the bottles in the middle. You need to have the boxes on the outside. You need to have equal amount of weight for both bags. So why do they have the four bags? Is that just in case somebody wants to evenly distribute four bags? I don't know why they have four bags. <laughs> is, or is that to just throw the people yeah. off to make them think, oh, wait a second, maybe, maybe we'll have to deal with that. Maybe if they have a not functioning bag, they have one handy. Ooh, that is a great opening. That's a great idea. Um, so points-wise, can you... Who's gotten the most points so far? I have no idea. Oh, okay, fine. You can just keep that to yourself. <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining me on air. I know you got to get back to your judging, so thank you. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Once again, Josh Amiron out here broadcasting live at Chris's Food Center for the best bagger competition. Of course, we're the home of the best bagger competition for your radio. And um, nobody else is broadcasting this right now because they don't have the time. They we're killing it right now. We're excited for this sporting event, and we will be ready for the next contestant. Let me move on down to my list. I might have lost my spot. I think we got Grant Peterson. Grant okay. Peterson is up. Grant goes for the high fives from his friends, but he does it kind of light reluctantly, and now he's going for the fist pound. And you know why <laughs> he's doing that? He's trying to save the hands. You need those I for this I think you're thinking too much into it. No, you're not thinking enough, Roberta. <laughs> That's what you got to be thinking about. Wait. It's... He looks a little nervous. No, he just looks like he's he's ready. He's focused. He's in the zone. Yeah. Oh, yeah, we're ready. <laughs> is Grant ready is a real question. And boom, stopwatch is started. Opens up the first bag. Got the bag set. Ooh. Paper towels first. Oh, the <laughs> foolish beginning, but he can hopefully recover from that. He's going standing up on the paper towels. Ooh, Interesting the strategy. Are up too. We've seen 99% of the people go paper towels last. What does Grant know that everybody else doesn't? It's got to be his years of experience. That's got to be what's helping him. He's going to the Cheez Its. Now, me personally, Cheez Its go right into the car. You're not going to waste time putting in the bag. You eat them on but the way you, home. You have to for the competition. I understand. Now, going to the crackers. Now, the problem with this spread is you got the crackers and nothing to put on the crackers. That's what they didn't think about because you're going right. to go straight with the Pringles then if you need that for the, the drive home. He's now going for the cans and bag two. The time rise right now sitting at 50 seconds, so he's going to be going above that 53-second mark, already down to nine points as he feels the points slipping out of his hands, his sweaty <laughs> bagging hands as he's trying to move on to the next. Down already to eight points here time-wise. But the bags so far are looking very well packed. Very and well that, packed, once again, is what one. it all that matters. But we're already up here to a minute 10. He's got the M&Ms putting those to the bottom of the bag. A couple more items. There's the chips. Does he have enough room? Boom. Hopefully oh, he doesn't forget the room. one box. Boom. He's, he's got, got it done there. On one. one minute and 19 seconds. 
And that's going to put I think him. That one was organized bag. That second bag seemed very organized. Yeah, it was, it was, like it was well organized left. bag, at least on number two. Yeah. But that's going to put it once again, the minute 19, going to get him about maybe three points, maybe four, depending on the official stopwatch time. And I just, we saw, I believe that the fastest time we saw was on in that 61 second range, which was eight points. And I think that's going to be such a huge difference right. in this scenario that I just don't think, unless you get a higher time, I just don't think you're going to be able to recover something like that. I've got my ideas of who's in that top three. And I think one of our early contestants is one yes. really that's been strong. Was it that's, the second one or something, wasn't it? The second or third one. Oh, I know exactly which one, but I'm keeping it to myself because I've been doing the head, the points in my head. I don't want to let anybody down when they get the official scores because these judges obviously are professionals comparative to me. So I'm going right. off the they novice went to points. Chris's college. Yes, Chris's college, the University of Chris's. Correct. So we've got what do we got left? We got. Dick is up next, and then Brooke is our final one, unless they add one more. Once again, Josh Amiron out here broadcasting live at Chris's Foods for the Best Bagger competition. <laughs> As they're looking over the All scores right. here so far, the winner of this does go, I believe, to the Mall of America. Correct. And they face they off against Chris's Foods. other places such as Coburn's. Is that a few winners? Uh, London Byerly's that's had a winner as well. Kowalski's Market, bunch of different places. Obviously, Chris's Foods in Stan Sandstone was a dominant factor in the early two. I don't need to tell you that, but in the <laughs> early two thousands, Chris's Food Center won in 02, 03, 04, 05, 06, and then saw a little bit of a slide there in two thousand seven. Right. Not surprised. That was the year, unfortunately, where uh, Carl had his arm in the cast, and that kind of affected his time. They really thought he was going to be that number that really had a chance to win it here. Okay. We are ready. Dick All is right, ready Dick. as well. All right, he's opening up the first bag with his hand. Now, what's interesting about Dick this time is he's wearing a watch. I don't know if I've seen any of the contestants wearing the watch, <laughs> and that just might hold him down just enough to just affect that, it's not a lot of time. We're not talking about a lot of time, but when it comes to bagging, each four seconds is a point. And if you're using a watch that's going to hold you down like that, <laughs> I, I, th I don't. You don't think it's going to, you might not <laughs> think it affects them, but sometimes the watch is a key fact. I would have kicked it off. I, it might even be worth taking it off right now, to be honest. But <laughs> he's going to keep on bagging that first bag. He's opening bag number two, going to bag number two really early. There's still a lot of items still on the table, but he's going to bag number two. I'm waiting for him to prove me wrong, though. He's now going to yeah, the paper he did towel. The paper towel standing, paper towel up, on standing the up. But to be fair, you can crush paper towels. What, like you're just going to take them home and roll them back out, anyways? And I go right. through a roll in about a, a couple of days, anyways. Got all the oil and grease and stuff like that. It doesn't paper towels? You can crush them up. That's fine. Maybe not for the scoring. We'll have to look at. It. We'll have to look and figure it out exactly. Well, but I heard her say that the cans had to be on the outside and the bottles had to be on the inside. Ooh. So there's organization. Well, you don't want the glass too. on the edges. I mean, that's that's just a common factor. Right. But we're sitting up now here at about uh, a minute 30 as he throws the Prio can in. Moving down to the last seven. I don't know if he's going to get these in two bags. He might have to do a third. Ooh, is he going to have to readjust? We have. Oh, now he goes back to the first bag. The first person to go back to the first bag here today. Yeah. He's running out of room. Running out of room. Now he's just going to throw the peaches in there all <laughs> willy-nilly. It's all, like, doesn't matter. The chip's on top. Hey, <laughs> let's bring it home. <laughs> Unfortunately, over the 89 seconds there, so that's, of course, going to go down to the one point, but we'll see how the rest of the bagging goes. As the games go along here right. today, that loaf of bread's looking a little less <laughs> fresh. If, if, if you're going to buy that loaf of bread here at the end of this contest, sure it has some air folds in there. I would probably like end up just going to the, the other side and yeah. just maybe getting a fresh one. We do have Brooke, I believe, will be the last person here. And then after Brooke, we'll take a little bit of a break. We'll wait for those judges to give us the score. Scoring. We'll talk about it. We'll break it down. I, I cleared out tonight's schedule, so we'll have the seven-hour post game where we'll talk. I'm just kidding. It won't be seven hours. <laughs> I'm like, what? But we'll have the we'll have the post game. We'll talk about it. <laughs> and we'll see, we'll see um, 
We'll see who yeah. wins us on there. We got another guest coming on. Is that yeah, what I'm? Is that like Scott? Scott's right. last day today. All right, bring Scott on here. Let's, yep. let's hold on one second. All right, the one of the older competitors. As he, I just wanted to go with savvy veteran. I would have is is the wording I would have used. All right, Scott. So, prob- how many years have you at least have you done the bagging part of this? This is the first time I ever did it. Other than be throwing stuff in the bag at a shopping shopping center or doing my own shopping but i've never done this well not to be mean but we could tell this is the first time you've ever bagged it when you compare it to some of these kids out here well thanks these, these fresh <laughs> arms these fresh kids are coming here with the strategy you I, you came in a little light-headed I'm how do you sti- feel about I'm that i'm still competitive i coached 35 years yeah and that fire is still there yeah I but s- i blew it on this <laughs> yeah well yeah you kept it right, though. You, they looked bagged properly. You had the two bags. It's just the time is such a factor in what today's game. What is my game. time? The time has to be under under 129 to get more than one point. Oh. Unfortunately, your time was already above that. There's only been one person that's been in 7, 8, 9, or 10 today, and I believe just an 8-pointer so far. Well, this so, is a competitive game, and it draws yeah. out competitive people, and you're going to get that kind of action. Yeah, it's been some great action here so far. Uh, so what what are you moving on to with the rest of your life? I uh, We're moving down to Cold Spring, which is an arch rival. I lived down in that area for Oof. 20 years and coached. And uh, so we just decided to move down closer to kids. So, But I am going to be working a golf course down there in Kimball. Uh, it sounds like, so maybe I'll get some golfing in finally after well, many years. Thank God you don't have to bag groceries because it was hard to look at here today, my friend. I know, dude. The first <laughs> football game I ever coached uh, was up at LaPorte. I got beat 82-6. to six. But we ended up that season five and four. Well, the times have changed, my friend. Yes, you were have. rocking it back then. We look forward to you rocking it on the golf game here and uh, appreciate you taking the time to talk to us today. Hey, it's always great, and I love Christmas Foods. A great place to shop, great place to work. Absolutely. Once again, Josh Amir out here broadcasting live. And, Scott, thanks for joining. Thank you. We're at the Best Bagger competition, and I believe we are down to the last person. That is Brooke, unless somebody else has jumped in. Brooks, Brooks going to be the last person here. And Brooke goes. And off she goes. Brooks taking her time. Brooke slowly going <laughs> one jar at a time. Now the mustard. Do you see her smiling at her mom when she, her mom takes pictures? Yeah, I'm guessing her mom might have She's forced like her into this competition. That's what I'm thinking. Look at her smile. I, Thanks, Mom. <laughs> it's going to work well for whatever. The, I don't know what the kids are on these days, Instagram, TikTok, doesn't matter. It's going to look great. It's going to be a great picture for that, great profile picture. But the problem is, can we get mm-hmm. everything packed up well? And I that's going to that's gonna be where the points are. Obviously, time-wise, we're, we're going to go down to the, just the one point. But if you can get everything else perfect, Get that to then the 21 it, seconds. Get up there. We'll wait and see. I'm going to guess the top score here today is going to be a 25 out of 30. So, unfortunately, think so? I think so. Okay. Yeah, that, I mean, uh, for my professional opinion, um, depends on which, which judge is from Russia, and that will be d- deciding whether or not they subtract one point <laughs> or not. The, judges, the Russian <laughs> judges are tougher. The Olympics, come on. All right, whatever. She's mo- she's <laughs> Joshua just had some older ladies laughing at him about that one. That's fair enough. I mean, it didn't, did you not know that? Like the Russian judges well, have always been the Russians hardest judges in the, Olymp- the Olympics? Hardcore people. Yeah, they've always been the hardest yeah. judges. Oh, man. I'm surrounded by amateurs. As she's packing up the second bag, got the last couple items down to seven items. It's packed pretty well. Taking a time. That's okay. Nobody has any plans tonight, so we can just pack it away. Finish it up there with the edges. The bread on top. There's two more items. And boom. Done. Once again, that'll go. be that'll be in just a one-point range for the time-wise. But, yeah. but everything else looked pretty well. Looks it like did. the distribution of the bags might be just, just good enough. It and that's going to be... That's going to be up there. It's not going to be the top score, but it won't be the lower score either. That'll be somewhere in the middle. 
We right. saw we saw a lot of different competitors going at it here today. Fifteen. But only one that did the multiple. The they did the multiple grab. Yeah. But that unfortunately seemed like it was just too late in the game yeah. to go for the three when you're already. Remember, we're going to test you out on it too. Remember? Yeah. Well, it's. I just don't like him. I don't like embarrassing people. Like I'm just a professional. <laughs> okay, I'm just an athlete. Gosh. I'm just an athlete. That's just. I've always <laughs> been an athlete. It's what I've always been. And that's that's just what it's all about, my friend. That's what the importance is. We'll take a break. We'll come back here with hopefully your scores in a little bit. You're listening to WCMP. Welcome back here, WCMP, folks. I have I've been broadcasting now seven years in radio, four in TV, and I have never seen a bag off. And we are seeing a bag off here in 2020. The crowd is ready for it. It's going to be a great one, folks. As Josie comes in up here, and also Tyler are going to bag off here as they were within one point of each other in what should be a great final matchup. We'll rock up the music here. This is pretty serious. Oh, yeah, They're yeah, very it is. serious here. Boom. Got the bag. Now, this is the second chance. He's going to go on top of the you items. See how he took the he's, bag and jumped it on the other side of the table right away? He's basically pushing items across with the bag. I like, oh, the oh. paper towel off the side of the table. That might become a reach later on. That's going to add a couple different seconds if he has to reach up all the way or go around. Wow, look at him go. He might have to go around, and that's going to be a big deal, especially when it comes to a bag off. No. Oh, he's Ooh. going for it right away. Switches the other oh. side of the table. We haven't seen this today. No. This back in 1994, Steve went for this move and it turned out terribly. But we'll see if it pays off for him this time because I think he's got it down. Moving he on does. here, about 44 seconds. He's going for the last couple items. He's down to about five. Woo. Paper towels in like a little bit early. Seconds. He pulled it right back out. Now he's going to try to get this can all the way down to the bottom. But he's got another can way over on the other side. He doesn't see. Uh, he doesn't can. see the other can. He's got a. Oh. And he's going to push that down. And that, though, time-wise, is still going to be around the minute mark. That's still a decent That's time. because he turned around. He couldn't see that can by the other bag. When you switch the side of the tables, you always have that chance of missing the one canned item that sits on the other side of the table. It's a classic blunder we've Look seen year after year. But. Aww. It's not. It's still a great time. Yeah, no, I still is. think that's still a great time. Yeah. And as long as the bags are packed relatively decently, it's still going to take a pretty good performance from Thorvig to be able to hold up the family name. Right. So I, I think it's go, it's <laughs> going to be interesting. It's going to be an interesting mm -hmm. final there, as they're all packing things up there on the score. That was the paper towel falling off the side of the table. Definitely hurt the overall. It's, a it's all of a sudden you're, you. It's the mental capacity. You're it thinking about how around. you're thinking about the item first off, because that's one of the things that kind of gets in your head. You're thinking about how am I going to pull off that paper towel back in when you should be thinking about where's this next can going. So right. if you're wasting your time, your mental energy, your right side of your brain is all of a sudden starting to think about that Listen paper to towel you, when the Genius left side needs to here. keep thinking about grabbing the next item. It's it it was it was. It's a blunder, and we'll see. But then again, Thorvig's dealing up with a lot of pressure because not only does he still have to get a decent time, he's got to get under a he's got to get under a minute, and that's just to be able to beat him time wise. Now let's he's look probably at probably trying to beat his dad's score. I bet don't you? Think? I there's no point in even trying. I would probably give up on that. <laughs> but let's look at the time. So that was closer to a, probably a seven point difference. So even if Thorvig throws out one of those 53 second ones it's only three point difference and right. then he also has to have all the other stuff perfect that is going to end up being actually still a high score i bet the judges put that around about maybe a 24 which is mm -hmm. a 23 24 which for dropping a paper towel is pretty dang good right they're setting the table back up here for the final contestant and i'm going to be intrigued to see what he does. He had what I would say was a slower time last time, but he had the, probably one of the best packed bags with mm -hmm. a decent speed. Like it wasn't, there was some, better, some better packed bag, but I say overall average was the best out of anybody in that first round. This round, he's got to do the same thing there, but kick up that speed by at least three yeah. more seconds. 
But if you think too much about that three seconds and you rush it, you might not get it done. All right. Here we go. All right. First bag, kind of holding up there, but he gets the box in. Now he's going, now he's going for all. all he's going box, box, can. Can again. He's trying to get those outside corners so that way maybe he can put the jelly right there in the middle of that bag or he might save the jelly for the next one. It looks like it's too packed to try to put that jelly in this one, so he's going to have to move it to the next one. He all of a sudden got the beef jerky in there and now he's going to bag number two. He knocked over the can of spray, but luckily it's sitting right up there by his belt loop and stayed right, on the table. the table. If that had rolled off the table, that would have been catastrophic because who knows where that would have rolled. That could have gone anywhere. Could have gone to the produce aisle. Who knows? Now he's got to readjust the can. That's That readjustment is going to add he's a couple more though. seconds. He's coming down here to the last Ooh, five items. It's items. speeding up. But now, the oh, the rice kind of kicked out to the side. Down to about 50 seconds now. Can he get the paper towel? One more paper towel. Put it in the edge. He's got the last box. He's got to stuff it in here. Boom! Oh. He did it. 55 seconds looks like the unofficial time over here. I don't know what the official time is over there. But that's going to mean he's in that nine point range for the time wise so that of course is going to be big right that adds a couple more points than what we just saw in the last bagger but how's the distribution going to be distribution right. i think is going to be a big cause i saw a couple more items in that left side bag than i saw in that right side bag now weight wise mm -hmm. i haven't picked up each one and figured it out but i would have guessed that there would have been a point difference of about two and i think that two oh. points two points might hurt We'll see. We'll see what the judges come out here with that as well. I do think he had everything else pretty well packed up. Maybe one item a little bit high. But other than that, I've been very impressed with that one. The judges are very secretive. We don't know. I know. They've been keeping it a lot, a lot to themselves. I think what intrigued me on that one was the readjustment. He had an item down, didn't like where it was. He grabbed it, pulled it out all the way instead of just kind of keep it in the bag and twisting it down, pulled yeah. out all the way, pulled the bag out, and then put it back in. And that added about two seconds. And that would have been the difference between that 10 points to the nine-point range on mm -hmm. that. So I think if he had gotten that, that time in, mm -hmm. he would have won for sure. He still got a very good chance to win it because I think that time was just so much faster. But right. the question is, does he have everything right? Does he have everything right? That's what I want to know. He definitely had the most urgency there in the bag. He opened it up, that can of spray falling sideways, sideways. and rolling towards him and not falling off the table. People are going like to be talking. guy's paper towel. Yeah, people that are going to be talking tough. about that for the next year, about if he wins that, about how that just stayed on the table. And <laughs> that is a big deal on that one. Looks like we, uh, I think the judges might be adding up the score. We'll take a quick commercial break. Be right back. You listen to WCMP. All right, welcome back here, folks. Once again, the best bagger competition. Let's give it up for everybody. They allowed me to announce the winners, so we'll start off here in third place. Mo Ture with third place. In second, Josie Olson takes second. And your winner with First place points, Tyler Thorvig! <laughs> Making the Thorvig name proud, of course. We'll bring him on over here. Have him come on over here, talk on the radio. We'll bring him in after it. I don't know if he's going to have any energy after that type of exciting win. We'll see if he's, if he's able to talk. Tyler, exciting competition here tonight. Um, what did you think about yourself after the, after the first round you went through? What were you thinking? Um, I th thought that I went decently fast and that I got the weights pretty good, so I was feeling pretty confident. What did you think was your strength there of of, of round number one? Uh, probably the weights. Just the weights and just yeah. put it off? What about the second round? Did you feel a lot more confident going in the second round knowing that you had basically grabbed all these items already? Yeah, I felt a little bit better. Um, I thought I went a little bit faster, too, but I thought the weights were probably a little bit more off. But It did look like the left bag had just a slight more, just a couple more items in it, but uh, it really turned out to basically be enough for you to pull off that victory here. Now, what are you, are you just going to go out tonight and just tell all your friends and just party for the rest of the night? 
Um, yeah, I might go golfing. Might so. go golfing. That's a great way to celebrate yeah. as well. So uh, next you move on Saturday, August 15th uh, at the Mall of America in Bloomington, Minnesota. You think you're going to face some tough uh, competition out there? Probably, but I think we should do pretty fine. So. Have you had a chance to watch the competition out there before? Many times times so you've seen it many times so you kind of know what you're getting yourself into is, yeah a little bit is there an announcer that's harassing you while you're trying to do your job at, at the other one um no but there's a lot of music a lot of music but does that get you a little bit in the groove though a little bit yeah it doesn't so you, you excited to bad. uphold the family name then yeah a little bit are you going to guarantee right here on radio for everybody that you're going to take first place and win the state championship I will try my He best. will try his best. That's good enough. Tyler, thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate it. All right. Thanks, you. Once again, that's Tyler Thorbeg here, the winner of Chris's Food Center Best Bagger competition. Once again, move on to Saturday, August 15th. That's from 1130 to 1 p.m. at the Mall of America in Bloomington. First place for that is $500 cash and a trophy, a trip to the National Best Bagger Competition in Las Vegas. Second place is $250 cash and trophy, and third place, $150 in cash and trophy as well. That's going to do it here for the Best Bagger Competition. Congratulations to Tyler. You guys have a great rest of your nights.